Hi, I'm Kisane Appleby, or Zane, from Fruity. And today I'm here with... Roy Bland, the whole food dude. And he is a dude, and we are going to check out these two blenders. The Optimum 9400, which you've seen us both in videos with before, and the Ninja Blender, which you've probably seen on late night TV. We're going to check out the claims that we see, and the functions and features of both, and see which one comes out on top. You ready? I'm ready. All right, I'm going to begin. We have with us the blender jug here. The blender jug does have all the measurements and in comparison to the optimum jug, we also have the measurements down the side. So that's a good start. Next I'll do is I'll have a look inside of the jug. And what I look at inside of the jug is down the bottom where the blades which come out of the jug sit is plastic. The inside of the blade base is also plastic. So what will happen over time with this is that the two plastics rubbing together will wear away. And Eventually you'll end up with little black bits in your drink and you'll see them coming through. The next thing that I'm noticing is if I have a look down the bottom I can see where the base is connected underneath the jug. It's actually a little bit of glue holding the two together in there. So that's a bit concerning when it comes to longevity as well. But if I pop those blades in, and I do notice that when I put it in, it takes up a lot of space in the jug, which means that we're using up some of the, the blender space mm. right away. The next thing that's really important with this one, and it took me a little minute to figure it out when I first got it, is that I'm used to putting a blender jug directly on the top of the blender. But with the Ninja, you actually have to kind of pop it on an angle. And if you've got to get it on the right angle, and then once you've got it on the right angle, you can lock it into place. So that's the other part. The lid is the same, it also has a locking mechanism. And that's again because this blade is removable, so we don't want anything to happen there. But when you pop the lid on, you've got to get it right. You have to release the handle, push the lid all the way down with the two little arrows aligned on the side, and then close all the way in like that. So it locks all into place, which looks fine um, but the one thing I'm really concerned about with that and as with the jug is the plastic that it's made out of. This seems like a really brittle kind of hard plastic and especially on the lid here I can see that these little plastic pieces are breaking off really easily. But Tell us about the, um, the Optimum Jug Roy. Fantastic. So as you can see in the Optimum Jug the blades are actually attached to the bottom of the jug as opposed to all the way up through there. That leaves more space for blending. There are stainless steel blades and there's six of them and then on the bottom as well, you can see that it's not made of the plastic as well, which means that it's going to be more durable and last longer. There's another great point there mm. as well. The, the gears here in the bottom are made of steel, as with the drive socket. So mm. there's no wearing not only in the jug, but also in the base unit. Yeah. Absolutely. That's right. That's right. And also the, um, the actual jug itself is made of Eastman Triton Co-Polyester. Now that is actually a very strong material. We've tested and run over it in a forklift and it still survived and it was still no cracks or breaks in it. We've actually got a video where we there did that. There is a video of that, so you can check that out. And while you like the Fruity TV YouTube channel, you can like us and then find the video where you see how durable that jug actually is. Absolutely, and it's really easy to assemble as well. You literally put the lid on like that, put the top bit on, and then you can place it on the base, literally any way. There's no locking in or clicking in at all, which is really, really great. It's great because it's really quick and easy in the kitchen. You know, I fiddle with this. I've played around with it lots of times and I'm still fiddling with it, trying to get it all together. This one is the next one that stood out to me and that's the cord. So if you have a look, this is kind of like a thin cord. It's something like you'd see on your hairdryer or your straightener in the bathroom, whereas the cord on the Optimum... It's a lot thicker, as you can see. It is thicker and it's more durable. You can actually feel it. Yeah, I noticed that you could actually bend this really quite easily mm. and underneath there is actually a nice little um, place to wind up the mm. cord underneath the Optimum Blender where with this one there isn't and um, it, it does kind of almost feel like you're cracking it mm. when you fold it up in your hand so we don't want that to happen. Another point over here with the Ninja is that it does have these little feet underneath and I thought that was a really great feature and you can sort of lock it onto the bench but what I'm noticing is that it doesn't actually lock onto my bench because I have a wooden bench mm. and any bench that's wooden or has any grain at all that feature won't work so if the blender moves around a lot it's actually not going to lock into place um, whereas the sturdy four feet under the bottom of the Optimum 9400 they're not suction caps but they actually just sit sturdy on the bench and there's no sort of movement. So we've plugged them in and we've moved them together so you can get a better comparison between the two. Let's have a look right at the front here of the Ninja. The Ninja, it actually says right on the front that it's 1500 watt blender. Uh, what's the optimum, Roy? The optimum 9400 is 2238 watt. 
So there's a lot more power over there, but what gets me is actually when I do turn the power on here, um, we can see the little light comes on, which is great. There are only three speeds. They say dough, blend, and crush. So we had a little bit of a peak, uh, and of course over here on the side there's one that says single speed, but we had a bit of a peak in compare between the three speeds here. Even with the dough, which is kind of the lowest speed, it starts out quite quickly. So we should have known mix there's no stirring or mixing option there. You, you, you start out at full pelt. Um, and then you've got your blend, which is a little bit higher. It does make a lot of noise. And then you crush, which is the highest speed. Now, I don't know if you could see that on the screen or not, but there is not much difference in speed from that low speed to the high speed. So you've only got the three choices. If I try and press the single serve button while the big jug's on, the two litre jug, you don't get any result. And then, of course, you've got your pulse function, which does work quite quickly. So not much range. You've got the button dash on the front, no manual control. Let's have a look at what the 9400's got. As you can see instantly, it's got a really low, low speed. So really low, really quiet. And we crank it right up to the high speed. It's a really high Let's turn that one down. You look, even in comparison between the sounds, especially on the low speed, the mm. optimum is still a quieter blender, mm. which, is, which is great. And I love that you've got so much range and mm. so much control with the dial over the whole range of speeds that you've got there. Absolutely. And Absolutely. there is a pulse button on the side as well, right? So you've got the pulse on both, but you've got so much more range and so much mm. more difference over there. So that's the two blenders broken down, all their parts. The Ninja does come with some other pieces though. And we'll have a little look if I can unlock it here at one of them right now. And that's the single serve cup, which so many people think is such a great idea. You know, you, you make your smoothie mm. and you serve it in the cup and off you go. Now you've got your blade set on the inside there. We put the ingredients in and screw the lid on the bottom. We can only use the single serve. Now, if I press the single serve in a, for a second, you'll see it turns on. But as soon as I let go of the single serve button, it turns off, which means that if I want to make a single serve smoothie, I'm going to have to stand there the whole time and blend. So, you know, normally, you know, you can flick your blender on and wash your board and your knife while, you, while your smoothie's going. You can't actually do that. You actually have to supervise it the whole time. Mm. The other issue, with, which happens with all single serve um, blenders, is that what we've got down the bottom here is a seal or an O-ring that prevents any leakage. Mm. If you've put all that ingredient in, put the lid on and then turn it upside down, that creates a lot of pressure on those seals. They weaken over time, um, that the rings will wear out and they will leak. And that, that's a problem with uh, a single serve blender like that. So I think it's time that we have a look at what we can actually create and the quality of food that comes out of the two blenders. So you ready? Let's do this.